And I've been a fan of natural language processing for more than 10 years. So, you know, obviously I'm, so I'm from Germany originally and I've lived around the world. I speak several languages. So I've always been interested in language per se. And so, you know, once I saw this word to vector sort of paper where, you know, you could translate, you know, these vector relationships from one language to another. And, you know, I found that pretty interesting. So, so, so that's why that's in the book, right? That's of course outdated, you know, and thankfully we have lived through interesting times with a lot of progress, which, you know, is really specifically tailored to language, which has its role in finance, you know, it's certainly not the central piece, you know, I think we're dealing more with numerical data, at least so far, of course, the big question is, you know, is that simply because that is what we could work with, you know, when actually a lot of information is also in use, etc. So I think the main applications right now that I see for the large language model, mm -hmm. is almost more like these interactive research kind of tools, you know, I think that is kind of where they really shine at this point in time, rather than also given the latency and everything and a lot of like trading applications per se, you know, but just like you can use this to support a fundamental researcher and like summarizing all sorts of things and drawing conclusions and making suggestions, you certainly can and people will be embedding this in models, just like, you know, Google uses this to improve, you know, your search experience, just like that, you can certainly make better sense of, you know, the, the text data that surrounds your objects of interest using language models. So I think it's starting to be phased in, you know, in, in areas where people make sense.